We're at the eastern terminus of the Brooklyn Water Supply System. This is the Massapequa pumping station number one. It was put up by the city of New York probably in the late 1930s as an electric driven system to replace the old steam plants. This building, which is on Sunrise Highway in Massapequa, housed the electric driven pumps to force the water from the Massapequa pond in towards the Milburn pumping station and eventually to Brooklyn. The building was put up in the late 30s, perhaps the 40s, to replace the older pumping plants. This is the Massapequa pond for the Brooklyn Water Works. You can see this is, was part of the gate system. You can still see the remnants there of the controls. And this was the easternmost basin to collect water for the Brooklyn water supply system. Now it's part of Massapequa Park. We're walking along what would be a bicycle and jogging path and over to the camera's right is the remnants of one of the gatehouses that was put up by the Brooklyn Water Works to control the water leaving Massapequa Pond. And what year would this have been? About it that? opened around 1891. And it's constructed obviously of brick? It's basically red brick and sometimes they had tile roofs on there. Now the town of Massapequa has probably put on the asphalt shingle roof. Years back you could look in through the open doorway and see uh, a latticework grating over the spillway. Let's see if we can see anything in there. At the upper left are a set of barred windows for the gatehouse and as we pan down and to the right we see openings in the floor where the gratings were and in the far distance on the far wall you see what look like giant gears. They were parts of the sluice gate controls to open the gate that was directly underneath this gatehouse. While we're surrounded by cattails, behind me is the remnants of the sluice gate out of the east end of the Massapequa Pond. That controlled the water level. If they wanted more, they used to close off the gates, and if they needed to drain it out for any reason, they opened them. The gateway at the right where the water's foaming over was a normal sluice gate to help control the water flow without opening the main gate. But as we go over to the main gate, you'll see cut into the stone just about two feet back from the water falling over the edge, you can see the dark slit where the gate used to fit in. This is mostly rainwater. Some of it may be natural springs, but a lot of this was rainwater collected as this was the lowest spot in this particular area of Long Island. Even though this served a very utilitarian purpose, just being a gatehouse for the water flow, they still provided decoration on the buff brick and they usually were cast pieces that were put on with the rest. And as we come down to the foundation line and the original cut stone, the gates are behind me underneath this window and they come out and come over to this brick tube and then they went over to this which was the entrance way for the actual gates and here we can see where two, where two of the bar screens fitted in. Oh, right where these, uh, these slots are. Put your foot right, right, right. right there. Right? Mm. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Was behind us. Behind us is the whole pond. Right. I, I've had people reminisce that every so many years they used to physically drain these ponds and this one especially they remembered they would lay tracks down there for a narrow gauge railway and little dumping cars scrape up all the weeds and general junk and then they'd reline it with clay and then fill up the ponds again and this was done every 10 years or so. What are we seeing here, these patterns in the water? Oh, a lot of it is uh, the foam from the water as it's coming out, and this is probably some of the ground pollution that they were worried about when they built the ponds out this far. They wanted to go further northeast towards Huntington because they were worried, even in the 1890s, about surface water pollution.
We're standing in some of the grounds for the Milburn pumping station that's now located in Baldwin, Long Island. It used to be called Milburn, and then it was called Baldwin for the president of the Long Island Railroad. So now we're going to walk south onto the property, and you'll see the north side of the ruins. This was a gigantic pumping station, as you can see. You're actually seeing only about two-thirds of the whole structure. It was going to be converted into condominiums and work was underway when vandals torched it and everything stopped. This is the southwest corner turret for the Milburn pumping station and believe it or not up until about eight years ago maybe a little bit less these were going to become condominiums. The problem eventually while it was undergoing restoration and rehabilitation was the vandals came and set the place afire. How many units would this have housed? I have no idea. Uh, I would say quite a bit. The building is bigger than you think because we're only looking at a small part now. Uh, some of the brick arches you can actually see is new brick. They were working on this place quite extensively and you can see we're just passing the site of the chimney, one of the chimneys, which was long since taken down because these were originally steam powered pumps and then when the city finally took over they converted everything to electricity so they no longer needed the giant size of the building but they still had it. Now you can see here under those arches that is all new brickwork and the red sandstone base is still intact. Notice here we still have part of an underground. Hold on. Yeah, so this is what now? Uh, that was probably just a, uh, it could have been a light well, but I don't think so. I think it was probably used as one of the water outlets because the water used to also go to the south side of Sunrise Highway to giant collecting ponds. And that's now the site, I believe, of Freeport High School uh, track area. But now, this, this water, in order to get to the Ridgewood Reservoir, uh, was it a gravity feed? Or? No, it was uh, no. why the building was called that way. It was a pumping station. This was the fault with the Brooklyn system. Unlike many systems throughout the United States that had gravity, Long Island is quite flat. There was no real extra high area from which the water could be shoved. So they had to pump it. In fact, these pumps, when built in 1891, underwent extensive testing and were some of the best in the country at the time. Now, contrast that with the New York City water supply, uh, which comes from upstate. That is... That's all gravity system. In fact, it's good for a pressure height of 45 feet in the air without any assistance. That's about how many stories? About four to five stories, minimum. In case any of you have any doubt what this building was and to whom it belonged, here it is in carved sandstone, the Brooklyn Water Works. Wow. And it's... Would have been when was this put up? This was put up for 1891. Wow. And let's see if we can get a little uh, detail here. It is beautiful. Whenever I see it, I am just awed. Now, how did they make this? Uh, this was carved. They probably used some sand blasting as well as actual carving with chisels and then fine scraping down. It could be cast brickwork, but I kind of doubt it because of the three-dimensional quality looks like Ormolu where it's actually reverse patterns. Okay, now we're right by one of the windows and we're going to take a little look in. Correct. This is the eastern tower. We're looking due north toward the inside walls and what's left of the roof. Notice the heavy iron support links they had to hold the weight of the roof. It was a magnificent structure. As we're leaving the side of the tower for the Brooklyn Water Works, we're looking at the eastern part of the building. You can see the brickwork around the arches and the windows have been reconstructed. That is all fresh brick that was done within the last 15, 20 years. 
and it is a shame that the building was vandalized and it could not have been converted into little apartments and what have you. Reconstruction was done for the That's department. correct. It was going to be done. Somebody finally got title and ownership problems straightened out and they were just getting underway when the vandals hit. The roof color fell in. Everything fell apart. The whole north wall is pretty much down. The building on the right at the eastern end was probably some ancillary equipment for the waterworks. I still don't know exactly what it was, but you can see that too was being worked on. This little archway carried the stream next to the Milburn pumping station to the south side and eventually to the south shore of Long Island itself. It was probably not a regular piece of the Brooklyn waterworks, but it was used to help channel the water so it wouldn't interfere with Brooklyn. You're looking northbound up. There's some structural steel probably from the station. And there are some pieces of uh, heavy slabs of cut stone that they used in the walls and the foundations. To preserve the stream itself, they laid in these granite blocks. As you can see, they're very roughly cut stones. And then over here to the left, across the stream, you can see what looks like one of the base stones for the decorative work around the bottom of the building. We're standing on some kind of a grating. What are we on? This is a small bridge that uh, they put up in Baldwin when they turned this into a park. So you could have access to both sides of the creek. Okay. And this creek flows from the north end of town all the way past the Milburn Station under Sunrise Highway and eventually finds its way down to the Atlantic Ocean. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at this water now. It looks almost good enough to drink, huh? It does, but I'd, uh, I'd still be a little bit leery We're at the intersection of Milburn Avenue and Brooklyn Avenue. Milburn was the original name of this community, which is now Baldwin, and Brooklyn Avenue was in honor of the Brooklyn Waterworks, which has just to the east of us. Okay, Bob, uh, tell us about a little about the history of Sunrise Highway, which is what we're merging onto right now. Sunrise Highway is one of the oldest roads on Long Island. The Indians are said to have used it way back when, and of course they widened it and made it into a paved road. Just to our right is probably where the water conduit is buried, because it's a slightly raised knoll area paralleling us, and the conduit is approximately 8 to 10 feet in diameter and almost equally high. And it went all the way from Massapequa, past Milburn, into Brooklyn at Chestnut Street to the pumping station. It was smaller initially in spots and then it got bigger and bigger as it went further west to handle more water. And so in other words, they were able to put this road in here without condemning uh, property because it was uh, owned by uh, the city of Brooklyn, right? This right away? Well, probably. I would say that's a very good bet. We're inside our car so that we're not getting wet, but tell us uh, what would that be just outside the window, looking to the right? Outside are two silver posts, which were the entranceway markers for the office, or at least the Logan Street entrance, of the Brooklyn Waterworks pumping station, which was known as Chestnut Street, which is the next block to the east. Mm -hmm. And it was here that the water was brought in under Conduit Boulevard, or Conduit Avenue, came to the pumping station, and then was forced up by these giant walking beam engines and other types of pumps, up Force Tube Avenue to the Ridgewood Reservoir. Okay. This building site was completely demolished, I would say, in the late 1960s. Right. Now, how many gallons of water do you think that this thing must have pumped in its day uh, per Million, year? Or? Millions and millions of gallons is all I can think of because sure. they were giant pumps and they kept adding to them right, right. to supply those reservoirs. This is the westernmost, the third of the reservoirs for the city of Brooklyn. There were originally two reservoirs put up here in the 1850s, and 
then they made an expansion, and this bee was the third reservoir. It All doesn't right. look like it, but this used to be filled with water just 50 years ago. All right, now where exactly are we? We're in what park? We're in Highland Park at the borderline between Brooklyn and Queens. Right, and what can we tell about the name Highland Park as far as the terrain here is? It is a high land, the right. highest points, and you've done a good job on the terminal moraine history, right. so I'm not going to add to it. Okay, but they but decided they would use this to help bring the water down to the people of Brooklyn without pumping it to the people directly. Okay, and where did the water originate from? Your water came from further east in ponds in Queens and Nassau County. It was pumped in from Baldwin, as we now know it, into Baisley Pond Park, where it had its own natural springs in that lake, and then it came into Atlantic Avenue and Chestnut Street, where there were gigantic pumping engines that were the old-time walking beam engines, and it pumped it up a street curiously named Force Tube Avenue. Mm -hmm. The water was forced up the tube to these reservoirs, and from here it flowed down to Prospect Reservoir behind the Brooklyn Museum and the Brooklyn Public Library, to the rest of the people of the city of Brooklyn, which is what we know as the downtown Brooklyn district now. Sure. Well, why don't we take a little walk uh, down this sure. way? And uh, I know we have a, a, a little opening in the fence over here. Maybe we can give our uh, viewers a little peek. Okay. Watch yourself, it's very slippery. Yeah. All right, so. You can see it was, they actually built the reservoir atop the high land. This right. is actually higher than the normal ground level. Okay. Then once it was lined with clay, they put these stones over it so that the water would not erode the clay. The All right. clay would seal the reservoir. Now these spikes were driven in sometime later, maybe by uh, people who were hiking through here and they put ropes on these, they could get up and down because these are extremely slippery stones. Right. Well, now you're actually standing on what would have been the containment wall for the reservoir? This was the edge wall and right. there used to be an older fence here. Uh -huh. So this may date from the original time that the fences were put up in the 1860s and 1870. Right. Uh, now what do, what do we see as we look over to what used to be a reservoir? It's all natural. Yeah growth that's come out of the clay and it's whenever the sun shines of course and the little seeds come up comes this 20 years ago when i was here last it was nowhere near this deep right uh, when was the last time this thing was actually filled up with water and, and serving uh and as a serving reservoir? i would say the middle 1950s around 1956 they determined that there was too much groundwater pollution coming in and they hoped to keep this for industrial water right and evidently they decided against that and they just shut everything down but they kept the conduits in place and that's why sunrise highway is also known as conduit avenue or conduit boulevard because it's the giant water conduit that's built in there it's a brick tube right uh, and the force tube is still leading up here to the second reservoir which we may see later today okay and uh, unfortunately a lot of people used to try and swim in here right to their everlasting and fatal horror because several people died in here. The current was so swift mm. going through the gratings to get into the main pipe to go down to Brooklyn wow. that they were just pulled against it and they couldn't get away. Mm. So that's why it's very, very tricky and that's why these stones uh, would not give them access to get out. They were so smooth and slippery that they couldn't get a purchase and get out. This heavily overgrown site behind me is the location where the water came out of the pipes from Chestnut Hill Pumping Station into the Ridgewood Reservoir. There were two big iron tubes next to each other. The water spilled out into this opening, which actually is like a pool. Then it went over a dam edge and into the reservoir itself. In this fashion, it, it kept the reservoir from being eroded away by the force of the pumped water. Okay, and if we go over to the side here, I think we might even be able to see a little bit of the uh, pipe, huh? Just the top edge. Let's see. Right around over here. Uh, yeah, I see it. Yes, I just see the top. It's actually coming up with a little bit. We've just taken a little walk around and 
What are we looking at? We see some water there, Bob. Yes, this is actually water in the reservoir. This is the middle chamber, and the building far away from us with the white arches is one of the original gatehouses that was used to control the flow of water leaving the reservoir down to the city of Brooklyn. Uh -huh. It's amazing that water's actually in here because nothing's been pumped in since the middle 1950s. So this would just be rainwater? This is just rainwater. Uh -huh. And uh, would this be filled year-round, you know, or does it have its dry spells? I would guess it's year-round. This fence appears to have been wrought iron fixtures attached to rods. Fairly okay. simple, and I think it was all hand done. Judging by this, it's uh, very nice. There are some decorations on the pieces themselves, right at the ends of the fittings where the rods come up. But it's a very, very nice, simple, yet well executed piece of ironwork. Alright, I'm glad we got to a better part of the walkway. This is part of the third reservoir's fencing, and as you see, it is different from the second reservoir's fencing. Okay. It's chiefly strap iron, and then it was forged and beaten into these different shapes, such as this spiral that's directly in front of me. Right. And the others were twisted and made, given all sorts of odd shapes, but it was all hand done. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they even put hand forged rivets in here to attach it. Right. So this has been up since about 1863 is the best I can figure. Right. Because wow. that's when the expansion was put in. Yeah. The earlier reservoir was from the 1850s. Okay, we're looking at a red structure with three arches. Tell us what we're seeing, Bob. All right, that's one of the gatehouses, and it appears to have been added onto. I would say the original is the darker roof on the right that goes up into the air. And between the two white arches that are widely spaced, if you look further down to where the weeds start, you see a dark opening. That's where one of the control gates was to keep the water in the reservoir and then let it go out to go down the big conduits into the city of Brooklyn itself. We're at one of the exit gates for the water out of the reservoir. Right. And What's was, behind you here? Behind me is one of the gatehouses and you see two posts sticking up with flat wheels. Right. And those were the valves that helped work those floodgates. Okay. And that's what partially controlled the water getting out of here. Just up ahead here is where the actual gates were and went underneath here and then, as you can see by the way the concrete is cast, mm -hmm. it went over to those valves right. and then went into that building. Right. And then it was released to go down to Brooklyn. Huh. And now, right below me here, here oh, hold on to my. Side. Oh, all right, I got the yes, fence got here. You. All right, there we go. And that's, this would actually be the gateway where the water, uh, what, came in or went out? It went out. Went out. These were two of the valves that worked the gates into this building and then down to the city of Brooklyn. Yeah, and somebody would come out here and do what? Would turn they the... would probably turn them up or down depending upon if they needed more or less water flow. Right. And uh, I presume there was even more equipment inside and these were probably reduced to just being standbys. Wow. I can't picture anybody doing this in the middle of the snow anymore, but they probably did that when they first were used. Right. But these evidently are newer valves than what were originally in place. Sure. Any inscriptions on there? No, I just see open. I do see some and I see, crane. I see says. crane and I see 16. Right. Could like be 1916, yeah. it's possible. Or 16 inch main that it would be open up. Right. That's very possible. To my left, uh, which is north of me, is what's now the Jackie Robinson Parkway, formerly known as the Interboro Parkway. Right. That connects Brooklyn and Queens. Right. It's a very appropriately named. And that opened when? in the 1930s. Right. So that was well after the reservoir was operating. Almost definitely. Yeah, sure. And again, this is uh, this arch that you're standing under? This is one of the access doors to a gatehouse right. that controlled the water out of the reservoir and down to the city of Brooklyn.